What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to install Ubuntu Desktop on Windows WSL. By this, I mean you can run desktop GUI applications like you would under Linux or Ubuntu more specifically, but on Windows, you can run Ubuntu or Linux specific apps, programs, games, etc. on Windows natively through WSL too. In my previous video, I showed you how to do something similar using a remote desktop server and connecting to it. It. This is completely different. This is setting up an official GUI where you can run programs officially. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the guide that I'll be following. Install Ubuntu on WSL2 and get started with graphical applications. This was uploaded or published sometime in September 2022, which is a few months after the previous video that I uploaded on this topic. For commands, you'll find them on that page there, which is again linked in the description down below. First of all, we need to enable some features in Windows. Previously, you needed to hit start, type in features, open, turn Windows features on or off, and inside of here, tick both virtual machine platform and Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, restart your PC after a small update, but now it's even more simplified. Hit start, type in PowerShell, and we'll be opening Windows PowerShell as administrator. Now, inside of this new window here, simply type in WSL space hyphen hyphen install. Upon hitting enter, it'll download and install the Windows subsystem system for Linux, as well as anything else that is required. Now, as I already have these installed, I'll close out of it. When this completes, we'll likely need to restart our computer. So just be prepared, save all of your other programs and things like that as you may need to. For me, I don't. I'm pretty sure as I've already got these things enabled before this point. And now if we hit start all apps, you should see Windows subsystem for Linux, a new app here. Perfect. Now, all we need to do is download and install Ubuntu. For this, open the Microsoft Store, then search for Ubuntu at the very top and simply install Ubuntu, which is located here. Just make sure it's from Canonical Group Limited. Click install. But what we can do as well instead is do this via the command line. While this is downloading in the background, I'll head back to PowerShell, CLS to clear, and I'll run WSL hyphen hyphen list hyphen hyphen online, and it'll tell us what versions of Ubuntu we can grab, or rather what common distributions. Here we see 2204 LTS. This is probably what you'll want to install. So you can simply run WSL hyphen hyphen install space hyphen D space followed by the distribution name on the left, which would be 2204, just like that. When it's done installing, you should be able to run WSL hyphen L hyphen V, and you'll see a list of distributions installed. I think I need to open this one first for it to install and register in Windows first. So I'll open it up once and we'll be on the first time setup. But check Checking with that command once more. Yes, there we go. Ubuntu running version two. Great. All right. So we'll enter a username. I'll enter techno password, password again. And there we go. You can see we're running 2204.1 LCS and we're logged in. Great. Now what we need to do is update Ubuntu. So I'll clear sudo apt update space and and sudo apt full hyphen upgrade. As such, hit enter, enter the password we just created. I'd recommend having this the same as your Windows password, just to keep things simple. If you don't have a Windows password, just leave the password blank when you're setting it. At this point, it'll connect to Ubuntu servers and try to update. If nothing happens, however, it's more than likely a DNS issue. I'll hit Control C to cancel as it is, and referring to a previous video of mine showing you how to permanently change your DNS, what we simply need to do is sudo nano etsy resolve, and inside of here, change the name server from whatever it is to say 1111 or 8888. And we also need to stop Windows automatically generating this by modifying the Etsy WSL config file and uncommenting these two lines here or adding them. So I'll control S and control X to save and close, then sudo nano Etsy WSL. And inside of here, we'll copy and paste this as we saw previously, save it with control S, control X to close. And now if we try to ping something, it should work. Great, clear. Let's try updating once more using sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade. There we go. This time things are working properly. Now it'll probably download a few hundred megs worth of packages and upgrade, so this will take a short while to complete after we confirm it by hitting Y and enter. Now, when this is done, the next thing we're suggested to do is enable systemd, which was added in September.
September 22 and unlocks a huge number of things, even including the ability to use snap packages from snapcraft.io. To do so, we need to sudo nano etsy wsl.conf as such. Then inside of here, on a new line, assuming you've typed things in, we need to enter inside of square brackets boot system d equals true as such control s control x. Perfect. Now we simply need to restart this by running WSL hyphen hyphen shutdown in PowerShell. There we go. When we do so, Ubuntu and all of our other distributions will shut down. They'll stop responding so we can close these tabs. And now we just need to relaunch it. So we'll just wait for a few seconds. And there we are. Now, sudo apt update. We'll wait for this to finish once more. Of course, things are failing. Ping. Pings aren't responding. Ah, I see this resolve config reset itself. All right, let's try once more. sudo apt update. And now to test things out, they'd ask us to install the x11 apps. So sudo apt install x11 hyphen apps. We'll hit enter, yes to confirm, and around 10 megabytes of packages will be downloaded and installed. Sweet. Now to test it out, they recommend xeyes. I'll hit enter, and here we have a program called xeyes. When I move my mouse around, it'll record movements and point towards my mouse. However, as soon as I mouse out of this, it's not working as you would expect. To test out whether apps can interact with each other, we can instead run x eyes and as such to open it up in a separate process and we'll run x calc. Now we have a calculator. Moving this around and our mouse inside of it, you can see that the eyes are following us successfully, meaning that these apps are working pretty much as they would natively inside of a normal desktop environment, which is amazing. Obviously these GUI apps work as you would hope. Sweet. Now just a quick note, you'll know Linux apps apart from other apps on your PC, as on your start bar over here, they are displayed separately, but in the very bottom right, you'll see a Linux icon. The Tux icon represents apps running under Linux or Ubuntu, so you can tell them apart pretty easily. Now we can do even more advanced things. They talk about installing Octave, sudo apt install Octave, yes. This is a 900 megabyte download, so just be prepared should you choose to do this, but I'll give you an example of what it does here. And there we go. Now if we run Octave hyphen GUI, and as such, it'll open up on our PC. We'll click through this, seems good enough. Now we have this big window here. So they talk about it drawing a fractal, just to give you an example. So I'll copy paste in a whole bunch of text that they have on the website. Select everything isn't working for me for some reason. I'll make a new file, paste it in, which you'll find once once again, on that link in the description down below, under install and use a GUI package, then we'll simply save this file. So control S, I'll save it as Julia M. Now they talk about opening a second editor window. So I'll click new at the very top, paste this in, and we'll hit run at the very top here. They say to name it Julia test, so I'll do that. And now you'll see a new GUI window pop up, which is the fractal that we generated here. Pretty cool. So this is completely transparent on Windows. We can put other programs in front and behind them. It's great. It's pretty much like running GUI apps in normal Windows. And that's really about it. Now, assuming you want to do AI and things like that, using NVIDIA CUDA support, in the description down below, you'll find a guide on how to set that up and get going with it. But anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. This is a heck of a lot better than trying to remote desktop into a desktop environment and run things that way. It works pretty much seamlessly with Windows, which is amazing. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.